Aye. Aye. Okay. The New York State Racing Paramutual Wagering and Breeding Law, Section 102, provides that the New York State Gaming Commission shall consist of seven members appointed by the governor by and with the advice and consent of the Senate. Four members confirmed by the New York State Senate are necessary to afford the commission an ability to establish quorum and undertake action. This present meeting of the commission is now called to order. Ms. Secretary, will you please call the roll? John Karate. Sorry here. Peter Machetti. Here. John McClemba. Christopher Riano. Here. Barry Sample. Here. Jerry Skernick. Here. Ms. Secretary, please have the record reflect that a quorum of qualified members is present, thus enabling the transaction of business. With us on the telephone is Mr. Crotty. Uh, he can count. He can participate in the meeting, but not count towards quorum. Nor may his vote be counted when items are voted upon. He can, however, provide a sense of how he would have voted had we been able to maintain communications. Okay. Thank you. Before we move on, I would like to recognize that on June 7th, the New York State Senate confirmed our longtime member, Peter Machetti, to a different seat and term. He used to sit over there, now he's sitting over here. <laughs> <laughs> and he agreed to continue with us for a, on a new term, and we thank him for agreeing to um, serve with us. I'd also have the pleasure of welcoming a new member who I had heard of before and just met recently via phone, and hopefully we can do an exchange face-to-face -face very soon, and that's Christopher Riano and as a new member to the commission. Chris was also confirmed on June 7th and is currently the president of the Center for Civic Education. Chris also serves as a lecturer in constitutional law and government at Columbia University, where he teaches comparative jurisprudence constitutional theory, and the fundamentals of government. He has an extensive government experience, having served as assistant counsel to the governor of the state of New York, which one would assume doing that he would have known better, but he's agreed to join us here, and we thank him. <laughs> <laughs> having been general, also having been general counsel to the state liquor authority, he also serves as the chairman of the LGBTQ People and Law Committee of the New York State Bar Association. And we all thank Christopher and welcome him aboard. Our next and first item of business of the day is the consideration of the minutes of May 17, 2021. The minutes of the commission meeting conducted on May 17, 2021 have been provided to members in advance. I'd like to ask members if, ask members if there are any edits, corrections, or amendments. Hearing none, Ms. Secretary, please let the record reflect that the minutes have been accepted. Next item of business is rulemaking, and we have four items, I guess, on the agenda for today. New York State Racing, Paramutual Wagering and Breeding Law, Section 104.19, authorizes the Commission to promulgate rules and regulations that it deems necessary to carry out its responsibilities. In that regard, the Commission will from time to time promulgate rules and rule amendments pursuant to the State Administrative Procedure Act. Today we have four rules for adoption or proposal consideration. Rob, please could you outline the first item? Certainly. For Commission consideration is adoption of a rulemaking to allow for an increase in the frequency of drawings in the Powerball game. The Multi-State Lottery Association, which administers the Powerball game, concluded that more frequent drawings would attract more customers and has adopted a change in association rules to be effective for the August 23, 2021 drawing, to conduct drawings three times a week instead of two. If New York does not accept the change, it would no longer participate in the Powerball game. A notice of proposed rulemaking was published in the April 28, 2021 State Register, meaning the public comment period expired on June 28, 2021 no public comments were received. Staff recommends that the Commission adopt this rulemaking. Commissioners, any questions on the adoption of a rule regarding time, place, and manner of Powerball drawings? Hearing none, may I have a motion to adopt this rule? I so move. 
Second. Second. Discussion of the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion I would have voted yes if I was there. Thank you. I'll let the record reflect that. Next item. For commission consideration is a rulemaking proposal to allow discretion to require a thoroughbred jockey to serve a suspension for a riding violation at the same track in which the violation occurred. Following Stewart punishment for transgressions, experience has found that many jockeys seek a hearing which administratively stays a penalty pending commission resolution of the matter. While commission staff has been diligent in attempting to hear cases during the meet where the alleged transgression occurred, the adjudication process may extend beyond such meeting. As a result, the jockey can seek to game the system by requesting a hearing and then withdrawing the request at the conclusion of the meet, serving the suspension during a meet the jockey prefers. This tactic has real impact on commission operations as staff expends resources in arranging and preparing for a hearing that fails to be conducted. Subjectively, this tactic appears to be most frequently used during the Saratoga race meet where purses are substantially larger than at other subsequent meets. A predecessor agency of the commission, the Racing and Wagering Board, once had a Saratoga policy that allowed the agency to request or require a suspension for a violation that occurred at Saratoga Racecourse to be served at the same track, even if the suspension had to be stayed to allow it to be served at the Saratoga meet the following year. The Court of Appeals struck down the policy, however, concluding that it required a formal rulemaking to be valid. Staff recommends that the Commission authorize the proposal of this rulemaking. Commissioner, is there any question on the rule, on the proposal of a rule regarding jockey suspensions? Hearing no questions, may I have a, a motion to approve, adopt the rule? So moved. Oops. Second. Second. Any discussion of the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Motion carries. Next item. For commission consideration are amendments to various casino licensing regulations. Experience with occupational and vendor licensing applications suggests that certain rules could be clarified or modified to enhance the licensing process. This proposal includes extending passive investor and qualified institutional investor definitions to threshold ownership interests in any type of entity, in addition to publicly traded companies, clarifying that waiver provisions applying to licensing standards and qualification standards, clarifying that an applicant denied a license or a registration based on criminal history is not barred from applying for a different position as the relevancy of the criminal history may differ depending upon the position for which the applicant applies, clarifying standards for licensure or registration by incorporating statutory cross-references to important provisions or otherwise setting forth standards by regulation, clarifying that incomplete or misleading information on an occupational license or registration application may result in the denial of licensure, eliminating a provision that is inconsistent with the practice of temporary licensing of gaming employee registrants, clarifying standards for gaming employee registrants by incorporating statutory reference to important provisions, clarifying discretion to determine the scope of investigation of a non-gaming employee registrant, clarifying the duration of non-gaming employee registration, clarifying the circumstances under which vendors are not required to be registered, broadening the scope of discretion, discretionary waivers of licensing and qualification requirements for passive or institutional investors, and establishing wagering restrictions for owners, managers, supervisory personnel, and employees of a casino vendor enterprise or ancillary casino enterprise licensees that provide services to a gaming facility. Much of this proposed rulemaking was previously proposed but was allowed to expire following the receipt of substantive comments from which the Commission staff agreed. Staff has made those changes and now recommends that the Commission authorize the proposal of this rulemaking. Commissioners, any questions on the proposal of a rule to amend licensing and registration of the gaming facility employees and vendors regulations?
May I have a motion to adopt the proposed rule? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion of the motion? <clears throat> Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Next item. For commission consideration is a consensus rulemaking proposal to amend the video lottery gaming regulations to reflect historic amendments to New York Tax Law Section 1612. Recall that legislation eliminated specific marketing allowances and capital awards provisions for video lottery gaming agents. The, previously, the previous marketing allowance has now been included in the vendor's fee and is no longer segregated. With respect to capital awards, while the commission still approves each capital project, the reimbursement process has also been eliminated. The proposed rulemaking will also make other stylistic edits, such as adding titles to subdivisions, improving word choices, and using Department of State style conventions. Staff recommends that the commission authorize the proposal of this rulemaking. Commissioners, any questions on this consensus proposal of a rule to amend video lottery, gaming, marketing, and related regulations? Hearing none, may I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion of the motion? All in favor? Aye. Any Aye. opposed? The motion carries. That concludes our rulemaking for, for the day and proposed rulemaking for the day. Is there any new business anyone would like to raise? Hearing none, any old business anyone would like to raise? Hearing none, I propose that we adjourn. That concludes our published agenda for today, and I want to thank everyone who participated. Uh, in terms of scheduling our next meeting, Kristen will be in touch with everyone. Tentatively, we're scheduled for the 26th of July, and she'll be checking with everyone to, um, to confirm whether that's an adequate date for everyone. Um, may I have a motion to conclude? So moved. Second. Second. Thank you. That's it. Hmm?